Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper here. I wanted to talk to you about adult education. Uh, most of my viewers are in their 20s and 30s, some are in their 40s, but most are in their 20s and 30s, and there's a few teenagers, but none of you are like 9 or 7 or whatever. There's no 7-year-old sitting there watching Cropper B's videos. So, the people who are watching my videos are presumably done with their education, or in the process of their education, and they are already quite far along the path. Well, I had some advice for you about adult education, basically. Getting educated if you missed the boat because you were in public schools or because your private school didn't have anyone that it had to compete with, so they were lousy. So, if you missed the boat and you need to educate yourself later in life, and even if you're like 60, this advice stands even if you're 60, if you don't have much time, Leonard Peikoff gives this advice in his uh, course on education. He says that you should learn history, not math or science, if you're older. He says that history is the first thing you said about you. Why would history be the most important subject? Why wouldn't a math or science or reading up on the world's great literature? Right? Why wouldn't that be the important? Like, Say, should you start with reading uh, Sophocles, his plays? He was an ancient Greek playwright. And then read Shakespeare, and then read uh, Victor Hugo. Is that what you should do? Should you spend the next five years gaining a good uh, foothold of literature? Or should you learn mathematics, go algebra, geometry, trigonometry? and advanced algebra and calculus? Or should you learn about the history of the windmill the, and the history of the water mill and the history of the wheelbarrow and the history of the lever and the pulley and the history of science? Well, Peacock says, scrap it. Get to it later. First, make a priority of learning history. Right? Start with the ancient Greeks, or start in, in the Renaissance, uh, in uh, Florence or Italy. Read about read about the time of of Leonardo da Vinci. Read about uh, uh, the American Revolution. Read about the 1800s in the United States. I bet you don't know anything about anything in the 1800s except about the Civil War. And all you know about the Civil War is we freed the blacks. So, the United States, the 1800s in the United States is one of the, is, I think, the single greatest period in world history ever. I mean, you can't compare it to anything. The moon landings and the nuclear bombs, nothing. We haven't done nothing. The 20th century was a bunch of crap. In the 19th century, we invented the plane, the train, the automobile, and uh, wired the world, you know? In the 20th century, we're Fucking had to b dump a bunch of money down the drain to defeat Germany twice, and now we're giving a bunch of money to Iran. So in the 20th century is bad. Study the 1800s, the 19th century in America, or study uh, you know ancient Greece around the 2 to 400 BC area, or 4 to 200 BC area I should say. Um, that's what's important is to understand history to understand what the great men of history have done and what the consequences were. Now why is it that it's important to understand history? And it all comes down to this. Edith Hamilton had a great quote in her book, The Greek Way. Now I'm going to just do the quote as best I can from memory. I can't uh, motivate myself to grab the book. But it's just something to the effect of uh, men have a certain nature to them. And so, a certain situation will bring a certain action from the men. There will be a certain reaction that people have to a certain situation. And if that situation comes up again and again in history, people throughout history will act the same when they come up against it, within variables. 
unless they learn about what other men have done. That's it. That's the only way to avoid making the same mistakes, is to learn. I mean, so then we get the bromide that everyone's heard. What, you ready? You ready? Do you know the one I'm going on? If you do not learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. And the, and the sad thing is, you won't even know you repeated it. That's what's funny. So you better learn history, because you're making, you're making mistakes in your life every day. You're making tactical mistakes when you have personality clashes with the guy at the office. If you don't know about the way that the Greeks defeated the Persians, the way that the Romans ruled for so long and then fell, if you don't know about the tactics they used when they fell, you can't judge things like whether or not we're doing any good in Iraq. You have no idea, no basis to judge the war with Islam if you have no idea about the ancient Persian war with Greece and the ancient Roman war with the uh, Germans. You have no way to judge it if you don't know those facts. So that's what history is, is it gives you tools to know the world around you. I believe history is the most important. I had a good foundation in history before I branched out and started reading books in science and math and uh, expanding my literature intake. So history was where I started because, because I, I guess because I sensed early on that it was the most important, that you, know, you had to know about the broad outline and then you can learn the details in between. So take that advice and go get a good history book today and don't get the latest. Like for example, uh, go on, on uh, Abe Books, abebooks.com, Abe Advanced Book Exchange, A-B-E, uh, and type in the maximum published date is 1950. So you won't read a book published after 1950, and search for the history of Italy during the Renaissance, or a book on ancient Greece. Put the Put the published date, 1925, so you won't accept any books published after 1925. And search for books about ancient Greece, right? Buy a couple of books. They're expensive because, because you can't get these books for a dollar each. You, you're going to pay five or ten or fifteen or twenty for a good book about ancient Greece published that long ago. Because people know they're valuable to read. They're full of good ideas. Go get a good history book. Not the latest stuff. Do not go to Barnes & Noble and give 30 bucks to some socialist uh, like like uh, Jared Diamond. God almighty. Don't go buy his books, for example. If you want to know history, go buy a used book off the Internet published before 1950. And there's other great books. There's published in the 1970s and 80s. Go watch my... my uh, videos on uh, on books and uh, if you want a particular historical era so go get an education in history that's where you need to start if you missed the boat when you were younger